One of the most popular watch genres on the market today are dive watches. And so today I wanna to present to you what I feel are the top five best luxury dive watches. Now I'd be remiss if I made a list like this and I didn't include one of my favorite brands and that is Panerai. Panerai makes really two dive watches that they're really known for and the first being the Luminor and the second being the Radimir. Now my personal favorite is actually the Radimir because it's the original watch that Panerai supplied to the Italian Navy back in 1937. The name Radimir actually comes from a patented loom that they made from radium, which is unfortunately no, well, fortunately no longer used because it's actually made of radium, which is highly radioactive and very cancerous. And so for that reason, they did ditch that luminous material, but they did pay history and homage to, of course, that, that patent by the Radimir name. Now, my personal favorite are the Radimirs with the wire lug cases because they are not unlike what Panerai would have originally made, which are cushion case watches with kind of a sandwich style dial. And of course, that radium loom with the wire lugs that would have been soldered on. And the watches would actually be powered by a Rolex movement, which Rolex actually got from a third party. But nonetheless, there is that intertwined history between Panerai and Rolex. Now, unbeknownst to many people, Panerai only sold watches to the general public for a very short period. They've only been doing it since 1993. And the first watch they actually did was the Luminor, which is, let's be honest, probably the favorite from most people uh, from the Panerai range. The reason being is that it's donned the wrist of a number of famous celebrities, such as The Rock, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the man himself, Rocky Balboa. In terms of collectability, Panerai watches are divided in really two different areas. The first being watches made from 1993 to 1997 and from 1997 and so on. So from 1993 to 1997 was when Panerai was independently owned. And so they weren't actually owned by the Richemont Group. And so those watches are actually referred to by collectors as pre-Vendome watches. And they're without a doubt, some of the most collectible references uh, from Panerai themselves. After 1997, those are called post-Vendome. So those would be watches after the merger or after the acquisition from Vendome, which was actually part of the Richemont umbrella, but then ended up just becoming part of Richemont. Now there's a number of variations of both the Luminor and Radimir that one could go after. And frankly, there's not one pick I would say that aren't correct, except for the ones that have no water resistance, which in my opinion, doesn't make sense to have a dive watch without any water resistance. But at the end of the day, any watch you choose from Panerai, you can rest assured that you're getting a watch that is timeless, that is iconic, and that has donned the wrist of some of the biggest celebrities in the world today, and that has a design that is distinctly Panerai. And so for that reason, I felt I would be remiss if I didn't add it to the list of best luxury dive watches. The second watch I feel definitely needs to be on the list is the Omega Seamaster Professional. Now there are a number of different variations, but probably the most famous one is the one that donned the wrist of Pierce Brosnan when he played the role of James Bond. On. Now, of course, that is known as the Seamaster Professional 300M, and although the style has changed a little bit over time and materials have been upgraded, Omega has really remained faithful to that original design with the twisted lug case, H-Link style bracelet, and of course, that wave dial. Now, there are also a number of other variations, namely the Heritage ones, that I feel are definitely worth your time and attention, specifically the ones that they released very recently with the kind of sandwich style dials. My favorite is actually the blue one. I think Omega really knocked it out of the park design-wise with these watches, and I think they're a really great alternative if you don't prefer the Seamaster 300M. Overall, I think the Seamaster is a great watch because there are a ton of different variations similar to the Speedmaster, and so that comes also with a huge variation in price. And so you you can ultimately get what I feel is one of the most iconic dive watches ever for really a steal of a deal depending on the reference uh, you ultimately get and of course you can get it in a ton of different variations so you can choose the one that you feel best suits your taste and personality. At the end of the day it's a watch that donned the wrist of James Bond and so if it's good enough for him I think it's good enough for everybody else. My third entrant to this list really needs no introduction because it's the Rolex Submariner. Now, of course, if I were to assemble a list of dive watches, maybe the most iconic watch of all time needs to be on that list. The Submariner is a watch that's been made by Rolex for over 50 years now, and it's certainly one of, if not the most collectible watches on the market today, and definitely one of the most recognizable. There are a ton of variations, both in case metal, both in uh, the kind of colors that you can get, and really, I don't think you can go wrong with any variation that you get. However, I will mention one thing, and that is the fact that you really can't get them at retail price. The reason is because they're such an iconic and collectible watch, they're so sought after by collectors. And so 
that means that at authorized dealers, they have huge wait lists that you just can't get on unless you buy a bunch of watches and jewelry you don't really want. And that's really a shame, but I feel I would be remiss if I didn't mention all the amazing neo vintage and vintage references that people tend to overlook as they chase the latest and greatest new models from Rolex. At the end of the day, these watches have tremendous build quality, have a really different aesthetic to kind of the more modern Rolexes that in my opinion, really have a lot of similarities and all kind of look somewhat alike. And, and so I think it's a great way to get a distinct watch in the Submariner reference so that you can get something that's a little different from the norm, but that still has all the hallmarks and the classic iconic design of the Submariner reference. So no matter what variant of the Submariner you get, be it in gold, be it in two-tone, or be it in steel, or be it in different variations of color that it comes in, I think you can't really go wrong because the Submariner is one of the most iconic watches of all time. It's timeless, it's classic, and frankly, it's a design that will outlive us all. The fourth entrant in this list is the original dive watch, the first one to feature a rotating bezel with diving capabilities, and that is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. It's a watch that is extremely iconic because it was that first dive watch, but to a certain extent, I also do blame Blancpain for it not being as collectible as it should be. Frankly speaking, these watches are a little bit garish, a little bit big, and their most collectible ones are in 40 millimeters, namely the Barracuda versions and the Milspec versions that they did in super limited quantities that regular collectors like you and I watching this video today just can't get a hold of and have to pay exorbitant premiums on the secondary market. Ultimately, I feel it's a real shame that Blancpain doesn't serially produce those smaller watches that I feel are more appealing to the mass market because the 50 Fathoms design and the 50 Fathoms as a model line is such an important watch to the history of watches. Frankly, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have the Rolex Submariner, we probably wouldn't have the Omega Seamaster, and we wouldn't have the many dive watches that we know today. Now, if it does speak to you, I think what you get in the 50 Fathoms is an iconic dive watch, one that certainly gets respect from every watch collector who knows what you're wearing. There's no question that this watch is one of the best dive watches and certainly one of the best values because Blancpain's brand is extremely overlooked and underrated. You get an amazing movement, an amazing design, great history in this watch, and ultimately, I think at the price point that you can get at the secondary market, it's a no-brainer if this is a watch that speaks to you. And it's certainly one of the most iconic dive watches of all time, and so it had to make this list. Alrighty, so the last watch to finish this list is the Breitling Super Ocean. And there's a couple different variations, the Super Ocean Heritage, the Super Ocean 42. Breitling as a brand is super underrated. And this watch right here sells for, you know, less than an Omega Seamaster, for example. And I feel it really shouldn't because it has all the hallmarks of a great dive watch, a great rotating bezel, a great design, a great bracelet. And frankly, its specs are just amazing. It's a watch that is very versatile. I think you can use it in really any situation. It makes for a great everyday wear. And overall, it's a design that's very contemporary and that is timeless. Because it comes in so many variations, you can buy a Breitling Super Ocean in a ton of different price points. And so that allows you not only to pick whichever one matches your personality or matches your watch collection best. And so it's not only a great watch, but a great value at that. And one that I feel that definitely should be considered as one of, if not the very best dive watches on the market because it's overbuilt and it's a design that I think really fits any person's watch collection. So that concludes my top five list of luxury dive watch. Now, of course, this isn't a perfect list. I think there are a number of great dive watch options such as the Tudor Pelagos, the Black Bay 58, among a number of different options. But I would love to hear your comments down below. What do you feel are some of the best luxury dive watches that didn't make my list? Guys, I'd love to also hear your feedback in terms of what videos you'd like to see here on the Luxury Bazaar YouTube channel. And of course, I'd kindly ask you guys to like the video and subscribe for more in the future. Until next time, thank you for watching.